8. There were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified do not be afraid I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people today in the town of David a Savior has been born to you he is Christ the Lord this will be a sign to you you will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger Verse 13 and 14. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom this favor rests. left them and gone into heaven the shepherds the shepherds said to one another let's go to bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the lord has told us about so they hurried off and found mary and joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger when they had seen him they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them
thank you so much to our Sunday school and our Sunday school leaders for pulling that off. That was excellent. I invite you to stand in body or in spirit as we continue with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who alone does wonders, who lifts up the lowly, who fills the hungry with good things. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the tender mercy of our God. God, for whom we wait, in the presence of one another, we confess our sin before you. We fail in believing that your good news is for us. We falter in our call to tend your creation. We find our sense of self in material wealth. We fear those different from ourselves. We forget that we are your children and turn away from your love. Forgive us, blessed one, and assure us again of your saving grace. Amen. God in Christ Jesus has looked with favor upon you. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, your sins are forgiven. You are children of the Most High, inheritors of the eternal promise, and recipients of divine mercy. God strengthens you anew to follow the way of peace. Amen. Amen. Our gathering hymn this morning, Come, O Come, Emmanuel, 257 in your hymnal, and we'll sing verses 1, 3, 5, and 7. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. 
and also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take your power, Lord Christ, and come. With your abundant grace and might, free us from the sin that binds us, that we may receive you in joy and serve you always. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is from Micah 5, starting at verse 2. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me, one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. on those 
The second reading is from Hebrews, chapter 10, starting at verse 5. Consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, See, God, I have come to do your will, O God. In the scroll of the book it is written of me. When he said above, you have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings, these are offered according to the law, then he added, see, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second, and it is by God's will that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to Luke, the first chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud and the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. You may be seated. When I was little, doing the Christmas program in Sunday school, I always wanted to be the donkey. <laughs> and I never got to be the donkey. I always ended up, I was married one year. One year I was the star standing on a ladder with a flashlight, but never the donkey. And then as I grew older and started learning more, 
and realized there isn't actually a donkey in the Christmas story. <laughs> That's a part that we have added into the story ourselves. And maybe it makes it feel warmer and cozier to think of the animals sit, you know, standing around watching. But nope, no donkeys in any version of Jesus' birth story. This morning we hear Mary going somewhere around 80 miles on foot, no donkey, to visit Elizabeth. Did she set out with haste? I mean, she was fleeing for her life? Possibly. This pregnancy would have been more of a devastation than a celebration for her. 13 to 14 year old young woman that she was unwed, but engaged to be married. She was seen as a disgrace to the family, to her faith community. So she goes to visit Elizabeth, two women, both pregnant. Unlike Mary, Elizabeth had spent her entire life unable to bear a child, barren. So these two women come together and share their experience of pregnancy, but not just the pregnancy, but the terrifying situations from which each of them came. Now we like the sanitized pregnancy birth stories. We don't hear of the morning sickness. We don't hear of the discomfort of the extra weight on the bladder the swollen or sore breasts, or the blood. I think this fourth Sunday of Advent is an invitation, an opportunity to reflect and to name the realness of these pregnancy stories. Our Christmas stories tend to become sentimental. Oh, isn't that sweet? Their faith is so beautiful and perfect. But what if we name the fear, the risks to marry her future, even her life, the risk of Joseph, Joseph breaking off the engagement? And what about the shame he brought to her family in a culture where unwed mothers could be stoned to death? Our sentiment wants to say, oh, but it was God who impregnated Mary, so everyone knew it would be okay. Since when do people believe women's stories? Even today, particularly women of color are not taken seriously and their stories heard as tales. And for Elizabeth, She's been shamed her entire life for being unable to conceive and bear a child. And now here she is pregnant, the child in her womb wreaking havoc on her already aged body. The point of naming all these things so that we can challenge our faith to grow deeper, moving beyond the sentimentality that is our current culture of Christmas. So we might experience Christmas in all its realness, in the truth of what it was and what it is. God enters the world as it is, in all its messiness. God comes to us fully human experiencing fully what it's like to be human. God comes into the earthiness of a real birth, into the cycle of birth and life and death. Mary and Elizabeth cling to each other, support each other, help each other. They're not alone in their terrifying experiences. Their pregnancies bring them together two unlikely expectant mothers, each with their own fears and struggles, 
and in each other, they find comfort and support in their uncertainty. As much as we long for comfort, as hard as we try to make the waiting and expectation comfortable, as long as we add cute donkeys and peaceful smiling Marys to our birth stories, we miss the realness of the world that God enters. God comes to us in this world just as it is, here and now, into this mess, into the dirt, the fear, the horrors, the violence, and the beauty of the world that God created. It's not just some story that we read each Christmas to give us a little hope to make it through tomorrow. We read the story of two women, unlikely expectant mothers, who come together to share their experiences, to hold each other in their insecurities, who hear and believe each other's stories when no one else does. And God is there, just as God is here, in the midst of the chaos of our world, the grief, the longing, the loneliness, God is here. And we approach the celebration this week of Jesus' birth, expectant and free to celebrate and to hope even in the messiness of the world. Amen. Our hymn of the day, In the Bleak Midwinter, 294 in your hymnal. The stand so we faith the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, Maker of all one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light. True God from true God, 
begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him, all things were made. For us and for our salvation, found from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became human. For our sake, crucified. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, the right hand of the Father, judge the living and the dead, will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We have not sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead. In Church's gifts and ministries for your service. Bring your word to all who seek your transforming grace. Hear us, O oh God. Amen. Creator God, you proclaim your boundless love for all that you have made. Renew barren lands, polluted waters, melting ice caps. Make us servants of your creation that brings forth abundant life. Hear us, O oh God. Righteous God, you bring down the mighty and lift up the lowly. Strengthen those who seek justice. Bless the work of community organizers, activists, journalists, and all who call our attention to imbalances of power. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy. Compassionate God, you proclaim your love and mercy. Show your loving kindness to teen parents and those who are pregnant. Comfort those struggling with infertility and those who await test results are in treatment and hospice care. Today, we especially pray for Tom, Patty, Bob, Tom, Dorothy, Sharon, and those we now name silently or aloud before you. Hear us, O oh God. Gracious God, you fill the hungry with good things. Bless the feeding ministry of this congregation and community. Guide us to share your bounty with those who hunger or live in poverty. Hear us, O oh God. Faithful God, you stir up the hearts of those who love you. We give you thanks for those who, like Mary, were courageous in their witness. Give us such courage until that day when you fulfill all things. Hear us, O oh God. God of new life, you came among us in the places we least expect. Receive these prayers and those of our hearts in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also. Let us share signs of God's love and peace with one another in a COVID safe fashion.
You may stand in body or in spirit. Let us pray. God of our waiting and watching, we offer the gifts of our hearts and our lives to the service of all your people. Prepare the way before us as we meet you in this simple meal through Jesus Christ, our pathway and our peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new and the day in which he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the shadows and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophets' hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to Christ's banquet, feast on God's gift of grace. You may be seated.
invite you to take your cup that you received on the way in. All are welcome to partake in the meal at, in this congregation. You notice the bread is on one side, the wine is on the other. You can open the bread side, peel the wrapper back. So it's the body of Christ given for you. Turn it over, open the wine side. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. Most high God, you have come among us at this table. By the Spirit's power, form us to be bearers of your word sharing gifts of mercy and grace with all. Through Jesus Christ, our host and our guest. Amen. I invite you to stand in body or in spirit. The God of hope, fill us with all joy and the peace in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Through Christ Jesus, for whom we wait. Amen. Our sending hymn today, O Come All Ye Faithful, 283 in your hymnal.
in peace to love and serve the Lord. Please remember to take out your communion cups and your bulletins with you.